Hey everybody, Rose Butter here, and welcome to part 91 of my Umineko Let's Play. In the last episode, things got a little interesting. So it seemed like it was going to be a relatively uh, straightforward game of just Badler giving Angie, having, letting her have a good time, hanging out with her family again, setting her on the path to making the quote-unquote right decision. And I've been saying throughout, I'm like, this seems a little too good to be true. But things certainly got livened up when who shows up but Lambda Delta and Burn Castell have shown up and Burn Castell is wanting to do one final game against Badler. Uh, she is apparently going to bring Erica back, I guess for like a little bit of a redemption. She wants to finally win against Badler in uh, what seems to be a pretty like simple game that she's set up. So she's going to give uh, Badler and Beato a simple story, a who a who done it, and they have to figure out who the culprit is. That's it. That's it. That's all. No tricks, apparently. So this is where we left off. I'm so excited now that we're get like getting a true game uh, with murder and all that stuff. So let's jump into it. Let's see what type of game Burn Castle has in store for us. No sound but that to the falling rain filled the room. It covered the tragic scene in the bloody dining hall. At some point, Angie had fainted and fallen to the floor. Oh, that was another thing, is uh, Burnkestel has uh, kidnapped Angie. Angie found this scene. Um, she was brought over by Burnkestel to see it, and then apparently she's been, like, kidnapped, so... Now her consciousness was slowly returning, forcing her to remember what had happened in this room so she reflexively averted her gaze even before the memory overtook her. Look at this. Just this, like old school Umineko. <laughs> the regular game, the happy game, is over now. Six bodies lay in the blood-stained dining hall. Strangely enough, as her consciousness returned bit by bit, the terrifying scene before her seemed somehow less intense. This time Angie was able to look at the six corpses well enough to make out who they were. First, there were her own parents. They were a pitiful sight, colored bright red by a bloody makeup. There's that mention about makeup again. Next to them, that's Uncle Hideyoshi and Auntie Ava. Both Uncle Hideyoshi, the uncle who always said something funny and made her laugh, and Auntie Ava, the aunt who seemed to be so fond of me, are lying there, dead. Genji-san, the servant, is lying over there, and the one lying right, uh, right here is Auntie Rosa. Six people. All six people had their lives taken from them and are lying in this room. Maybe I cried myself out before I fell unconscious. The scene before me was still terribly painful, but I was somehow able to look at it without losing my head. So I'd already felt all the sadness I could at my parents' death. The next emotion that rose up inside me was a desire to check and see everyone else was okay. In that instant, Angie heard a scraping sound. Thinking she must have imagined it, she was about to relax when she heard the sound once more. It was probably coming from the door. I wonder if it's the cat. Someone was clawing at the door from the outside. Of course, she had no way of knowing who it was. However, for some reason, she was sure that it was that black cat scratching at the door. The black cat was telling her to leave this room. Angie understood and put her hand on the doorknob. I immediately noticed something odd. The door was locked. Damn locked rooms struck again. We can't, we can't escape them. The same bad feeling I'd felt after being locked in the parlor crawled up my spine. However, unlike the time in the parlor, this door unlocked itself easily when I turned the knob. I unlocked it and slowly opened the door. Beyond the door, I could see the dimly lit hallway and a cat dashing down it away from me. Then it stopped, its emerald eyes glittering in the darkness, as though it was waiting for me to follow. The hallway was dark and dominated by an eerie silence. When the black cat saw I was coming, it walked forward as if guiding me. I could hear nothing except the creaking of the floor, the jingling of the cat's bell, and the howling of the storm outside. The party is being held in the hall. I should be able to hear at least a little of the noise from this hallway. It's like, everybody just gonna be dead? Like Angie fell asleep and she missed all the twilights. Everybody's dead. It was a reasonable conclusion. Then we finally reached the main hall. The 
hall was frigid, and no trace of that party atmosphere remained. Could all of that fun have just been an illusion? The black cat's bell rang out. When I looked up, I saw it had its feet on the stairway to the second floor, urging me to follow it. The black cat seemed to nod, then silently ascended the stairs. Guests were allowed to go wherever they wanted on the first floor, but the second floor was Uncle Krause's family's house, and I remembered getting into trouble for trying to go up there. However, at that moment, I couldn't think of any options other than following that cat. I walked along the dark hallway with the black cat. Eventually, we reached one of the doors. The black cat scratched at the door, then turned to look at me. It must have been telling me to open it. I put my hand on the doorknob and felt the resistance of a lock again. This door is locked. I turned around to tell the cat this, but inexplicably, a single key lay right in front of the cat. I don't know why I'm getting like Resident Evil vibes, but like this door is locked. I need a key. Oh, there's a key. Even like the sound is just like a, it's when she picks up the key, it's like item found. It was then she finally noticed a strange sensation on her fingertips. Blood. Somehow Angie's fingertips were stained red with blood. She let out a short cry and dropped the key that she had just removed from the keyhole. She finally realized, in the darkness she hadn't noticed before, the black cat's, ki uh, the black cat's key was covered with blood. The emotions had gone numb and Angie sprang back. A terrified scream rang out through the dark hallway. Even so, Angie would eventually open that door. That door led to Natsui's room. Natsui's room was a terrible mess. Blankets and sheets were torn. Cosmetics and books lay all over the place, as though a typhoon had just ripped through it. Well, so, yeah. So right away, we're getting all the bodies. No having to wait. <laughs> and there were the corpses as well. I mean, this game's starting a little bit later than usual. We gotta speedrun it here. Krauss and Natsui's corpses lay sprawled on the floor. Very shortly, Angie will step into this room. She will then scream in terror once more. And it isn't just the dining hall and Natsui's room. In the stormy rose garden, Shannon's corpse lies exposed to the rain. Partway down the path to the rose garden is Jessica's corpse. When Angie finds that, she'll probably dash crying and screaming into the guest house. And death awaits her inside the guest house as well. I wonder when she's going to find Badler's body. I'm assuming like everybody's dead. Just inside the front door is Nanjo's corpse. In the servant room nearby, even Koda and Kumasawa lie dead. The total number of corpses is 13. A full 13 corpses are waiting for Angie. They wait in the mansion in the guest house on this desolate Rokujima. It's like the worst egg hunt ever. Angie exposed to the wind and rain and tormented by thunder to find them. So how many corpses have we found so far? So there is... Oh, the first Twilight Burns puzzle. All right. When are we going to see uh, Erica? When's Erica going to pop out here? So this was the first Twilight. That's a lot of corpses for the first Twilight, though, huh? So let's see. There were six corpses in the dining room. And then there was Natsui and Kraus. So, like, has she already found all the bodies? So six, seven, eight... And then there, I maybe. And then there was Shannon. And there was Jessica. Nanjo. Yeah, that's 13 bodies. A full 13 corpses for her to find. So they're all here. So Erica's laying, or not Erica. Burncastle is laying everything out. The tragedy of the first twilight was discovered at 6 in the morning on the following day. Goda, who had woken up to get breakfast ready, went to check on the adult siblings, who had remained in the dining hall since the previous night because of the family conference. So Badler is still alive. There he is. Oh, we got purple now. Okay, this is something new. Like, when I play certain games, I want to click on this and be like... This makes me think of, like, Phoenix Wright or something. Where, um, So this is important information. So there's blue truce, red truce, and then there's purple. I wonder if we're going to get, like, a specific thing. Oh, not, sorry, not config. Um, tips. Maybe it's going to keep all this information here for us. Apparently not. Okay. 
So this is all important information, the dining hall. It'd be nice if we had, like at the end, they put all this information. Uh, similar to Higurashi, where I had to connect the different, um, what are they called, fragments? If I could have something where they lay out all of these purple facts and I have to, I have to figure it out. That'd be so cool. Like, please let me do that. I want like, like a basic mystery game where it's giving me this information. I got I have to figure it out. Like, who is the culprit? Wait, Kumasawa? Hold up. Wait a minute. Wasn't Kumasawa dead? Wait a minute. Hold on. Log. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, in the servant room nearby, even Gota and Kumasawa lie dead. Oh, I see. So Angie saw, okay, Angie saw the aftermath of everything. So this is like going back in time. Derp. The first Twilight, right? 13 people are already dead. Okay, I was like, what? Eva-sama, <laughs> It's just weird, like, now that we know all the people that are going to die, going back, it's just like being like, well, Kumasa was going to die. <laughs> Kraus is going to die. And they have no idea. そしかし so this purple thing here, like, is this actual truth truth? Because we know that Nanjo, uh, Nanjo has lied about dead bodies before. And uh, we know that Canon has definitely, like, well, I mean, all of these characters have lied at some point in the game, have given us false information, because they've been in on it. This is a lot of information they're throwing at me, a lot of these purple truths. <laughs> そくしだったろうね。食堂内を調べた結果、扉も窓も全て施錠され、密室であったことが分かった。なくや、ロックルーム、ライト、オフコース。食堂内から不審なものは何も見つからなかった。もちろん、食堂内に何者かが隠れている
よ他に質問はマスターキーの他にも各部屋固有の鍵があるはずでは本来なら存在するわねでもゲームが複雑になるので排除させてもらったの赤き真実マスターキー以外の鍵は存在しないこととするつまりこのゲームに登場する全ての世情はマスターキーでしか開け閉めができないってわけかそうなるわね実にシンプルなゲームだわとなれば次はマスターキーの本数と What if the culprit? What if the culprit was like Angie <laughs> or Badler, like just someone completely out of left field? Master key was go key go home. Go in the shio ninga, he pons it so motel. Took a bit na ho ho de candy salate. Master key was so many minutes carate ori. Okay. Well, I mean, Kotomo, Jibun Iga no ninga shio surkotomo de kin. Does that mean, so since、uh, Genji was one of the people killed, does that mean he still has his master key on him? So if you're going by that, then that would mean like either one of the servants on the outside did it or somebody locked the room from the inside, killed everybody but themselves. And that's that for, for that room at least. But that's something that's been brought up in previous games. It's like that's always been a theory that Ballers propose is like, well, what if somebody in the locked room was the one who committed, you know, like a murder suicide? Okay. We destroyed his master key. This was the crime of the first Twilight. The scene was the fully locked room of the dining hall. None of the servants holding master keys have alibis. Then again, no one has an alibi either. In Twilight. This will be interesting if the game will ask me directly, like, choose a person that you think is the culprit. Everyone returned to the parlor to discuss what should be done next. The phones were out, so they couldn't contact the police. The mysterious culprit hiding away somewhere, planning to attack their next victim at this very moment. Or was the culprit in here with them, mentally sticking out their tongue and tasting their next prey? None of them had alibis, and it was possible for any one of them to be a culprit. However, that tense feeling didn't last long. By midday, everyone got tired of arguing and they decided to take a break. Kraus and Natsu announced they wanted to talk with each other alone and went up to the second floor. That paved the way for everyone else to start going their separate ways, some breaking away to head to the bathroom, others to gaze at the endless rain. However, no matter how much time passed, Kraus and Natsui were the only ones who didn't return. Calls were sent to both Kraus and Natsui's room using the extension phone line, but there was no answer. Something might have happened. Man, they are really, they are like zipping by, zip, zip, zip. We're already at second twilight, just getting very. basically just the information that we need. Everyone headed to Kraus and Natsui's room together, and in Natsui's room, they found Kraus and Natsui lying sprawled on the floor. <laughs> みなさんの許可を得て私の鍵を開けました部屋の中には倉内様と夏日様が倒れていましたなんじょ先生がすぐに都を取ったぜそして二人とも即死だったと宣言した私は <laughs> I just love the way the characters are talking in this game. I know it's Burncastle's game, and it's like, it's a very, like, 
streamlined game, but I just, <laughs> there's no, like, with the previous games, there's all this emotion about people, like, crying over the bodies and stuff. It's just like, let us espouse the, inf this is the information that you, the reader, need to know to figure things out. <laughs> それぞれが使用人全員の I'm assuming that they did uh, confirm that the room was locked before um, Shannon quote unquote unlocked it, right? Like, that's a given. Now, there's one of Erica's tricks. Speaking of which, they did say that. Um, Burncastle was going to bring Erica out of the depths um, at some point. I hope she does make her entrance, whether in in this like in the game board or in the um, like the witch's smoking room. Okay, and then Angie just kind of walked in afterwards without any issue with the key. But, I mean, at this point, she's removed from the game. Like, all the pieces have probably been taken off the game board at that point. Angie's just coming in, seeing the aftermath, but she's not affecting, like, any of the, the crime scenes. <laughs> やしき自体にも封印をし、私たちは全員ゲストハウスへ避難しました。屋敷全体に封印窓全部をベタベタとか、はしごをかけて3階の窓まで。だ、さんすよ。だ、さんすかエリカムーフ。ゲームが複雑
第一の晩の犯人は確実に六人を殺しているならばわらわも青き真実で追求しようぜ密室の正体はこうだ Will Beato say about how, like, if they killed the six people, does that include themselves as well? Okay. ナツヒの部屋、食堂、屋敷のすべての封印は決して破られることはない。<笑>ってことはつまり、ベッドの下に隠れて、後でこっそり抜け出すというトリックは使えないってことなのね。<笑>面白い。なかなかだぜ、ベルンカステル。どうも。It definitely does feel like a lower stakes thing, you know, other than the fact that Angie is being held captive. But Vernkiss all said she was going to release Angie if they participated in the game. They didn't necessarily have to win to have Angie released. Like, this just feels like kind of a. It was just. It feels like a funsy game. It's, it's like, um, you know, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, in sports, like when you're playing a tournament, obviously, that's very. Like serious and you care a lot, but if you're just playing like a regular game, you don't really care as much. It's just kind of for fun. This was the crime of the second twilight. The scene was Natsui's fully locked room. This time, all the servants with master keys have alibis. The whole group, realizing the dangers of being inside the mansion, took shelter in the guest house. Wait, fourth twilight? Okay, we're just skipping to the fourth twilight? We went from second to fourth. Okay.、Um, all those who took refuge in the guest house decided to hole up in there until the typhoon passed. There, if everyone watched everyone else, they shouldn't be, or they should be able to prevent further crimes both from inside and outside. However, they couldn't do that without any breaks until the typhoon passed. Once again, their actions left a weak point open, and they were faced with yet another tragedy. <laughs> いつまでも戻らないんだジョージ兄さんが騒ぎだし全員で外に出てシャノンたちを探すことになったんだシャノンさんはバラ庭園に倒れておりましたほうほいたわしや And then well we assume at this point シャノンとカノンは the same person so 生きててくれと願ったさでも僕は Or Shannon and Cannon, two separate people in this, in this game. ジョージお兄ちゃんには殺せないねうんその後ジョージ兄さんにだけはアリバイがあることが分かったんだシャノン殺しに限ってはジョージ兄さんには不可能なんだ逆に言えばジョージの兄貴以外なら誰にでも殺せたわけだ犯人に悪用されるのを防ぐためシャノンさんの持ってたマスターキーはその場で破壊しましたAll right, so we have to think. So every time, a, every time a servant is killed, it's basically like a key has been removed from the game. The servants basically are just like walking master keys. Right? Yeah. They're, because they're the same person. Well, that was the whole thing. Like Shannon and Cannon's personalities, right? When they're killed, it's like the personality is killed, the persona is killed. まあ、シャノンが死んだんだから。
And they really are. I mean, you guys have told me that there's still a decent amount of the story left, but it, this feels so fast. This was the crime of the fourth twilight. Like we've already, we've already zipped through all the deaths. The scene was the Rose Garden. Well, no, Nanjo. We still have Nanjo and um, Jessica. There are no locks or doors. It isn't a locked room. So the master keys no longer have anything to do with this. Then the pace of the crimes begin to accelerate. Fifth and sixth twilight. The group took shelter in the guest house. It carefully sealed all doors and windows, sealing themselves in the locked room. However, several locked room murders had already occurred. Did locking themselves in a locked room do anything more than invite another tragedy? After arguing fiercely in the cousin's room about finding the culprit, they decided to go to the servant room to double-check the testimonies of Nanjo, Kumasawa, and Goda. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Kumasawa was also dead, and Goda as well? Yeah, and there they learned the tragedy. A tragedy had occurred once more. All dying instantly.死んでるよ。I don't know why I find it so funny. I'm just imagining a little Angie, cute little Angie, like a little possessed doll, just going around with a knife and just murdering everybody. She was the unexpected person they they they, they were not counting on. <laughs> Nanimokanoshinu,大がて,調べたけれど。ゲストハウスのとじまりは完璧だったよ。犯人はやはりマスターキーを持っているのかもしれません。それはありえねえぜ。マスターキーはもうここで死んでる2人の2本以外存在し
That thing is, why was she outside in the first place, right? They found her outside. By now it was clear that holding up wouldn't keep them safe. Jessica might have chosen anger as a way to numb her fear. She flew out of the guest house in a rage, searching for the murderer that she was sure hid somewhere outside. George, Badler, and Maria hurriedly chased after her. Then outside the building. Wow, that was fast. So she immediately ran outside and then, like, it wasn't like they found the body, like, maybe an hour later. It was, like, instantly. Outside the building, they found Jessica lying on the ground. It was, as anyone could tell by looking, a gruesome corpse. At least this one's not a locked room, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know about that. <laughs> he couldn't kill an adult. He could kill a kid, though. This is like one of those riddles where they give you like a bunch of stuff. It's like the sheep and wolf puzzle, sort of. It's like they give you all these things about like, if this is true, then this is true. I guess that's not a wolf and sheep puzzle, but like you have to, it's a thing where it's just like, this person can't do this, but this person could do this. But then this person can't do this to this person. And then you have to try and figure it out from there. This was the eighth twilight. The crime scene was outside. However, the three who chased after Jessica have alibis. George, Badler, and Maria couldn't have killed Jessica. So, is there really someone hiding on this island apart from the Ushuramiya family? The curtain is lowered on this tale for now. It's... <laughs> it's Angie. Or, it's Erica. We know Erica's not above killing people, so... これで私の物語は惜しまいよ。なかなかよくできてるじゃない。ちゃんと朗読したならペアとのゲームに混じってても不思議じゃないものがたりだったわ。それは認めるぜ。よくできてた。まあ、ここから朗読して感激に耐える
ルルの前提を説明するわ Definition of culprit is one who murders. It's possible for a culprit to lie. It is possible for a culprit to lie even before committing murder. Characters who are not culprits only speak the truth. Characters who are not culprits cannot cooperate with the culprit. Okay. Interesting. So, so they're, they, they are saying culprit in like single terms, so, but they are saying characters who are not culprits cannot cooperate with the culprit. Um, so is that something about like accounting for people's alibis, or is that implying that there could be multiple culprits? A culprit must carry out all murders directly by their own hands. A culprit must not die. Okay. So if we've got multiple culprits, then those people could have died during a one twilight. So it's not saying that only the people left at the end are the only people that could kill. The culprit must be among the characters appearing in the story. Purple statements are as absolute as red truths. However, a culprit can lie with purple statements. I like this. Okay. So that would be a situation like with the second Twilight where all of the servants all had an alibi for each other. Unless they all happen to murder the person at the exact same time, uh, they can't be accomplices. Right? つまり、トラップなどの遠距離殺人、間接殺人はないというわけだ。犯人が死ぬことはない。つまり、殺害後、密室を構築して自殺ってことはないってわけか。それはつまり、死者は犯人ではないってことにもなるわね。well, that's the case, then that really does uh, limit us to a very few amount of people. Mm. But maybe Beto saying like, it was like, if there's multiple murderers, then could they die after they commit a murder? But then they said the culprit can't die. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so no, no Erica. <laughs> ただし、犯人のみ紫の発言で嘘がつける。this does seem pretty straightforward. There's no magic, quote unquote, magic or possible traps or accomplices, really, uh, or anything like that. Well, there can be accomplices. Um, but yeah, it seems like a pretty straightforward murder mystery. So, like I said, I hope that they do lay all the purple statements out, maybe like in one like similar to the tips or anything so i can just refer to them and then i can just kind of like cross examine stuff and be able to you know cross people out there are no lies in the non-dialogue okay obviously people can lie but the non-narrative or non-dialogue it's all factual Alright, 
最後に改めて宣言するわ以上の情報で犯人が特定できることを保証するよし了解した腕が鳴るぞそなたと共にまた Oh, it is. It's like it's like Shannon and and Badler again, like back when they would talk about their books that they read. This is a real game between you and me. I recommend finding oh some paper and something to write with. Okay, well the game is just straight up. All right, I guess I should have probably had this from the beginning, but all right, let me go get some paper. I'll be right back. All right. Oh, this is fun. Oh, I love this. I love that like this chapter is really going like fourth wall breaking. It's it's telling me directly whether through the puzzles with Angie or through this directly where it's telling me um what to do. I love this. That is if you really intend to fight me. Okay, so I will probably have to pick someone at the end. If you do get completely stuck, maybe you should listen in on Badler and Beato's reasoning. We'll have those be hints for when you get absolutely stumped and can't move forward. Okay. Still, I would rather fight you one-on-one. -on -one. If you plan to enjoy our little duel, then try defeating me by your own power alone without relying on hints. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have that much faith in myself, but... So let's enjoy ourselves, shall we? Enjoy this game I've created, just for you. Oh, okay. Oh, all right, all right. So reread story, display the rules, check purple. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, display the rules. All right. Definition of a culprit is one who murders. It is possible for a culprit to lie. It is possible for a culprit to lie even before committing murder. Characters who are not culprits only speak the truth. Culprits who are not characters who are not culprits may not cooperate with a culprit. A culprit must carry out all the murders directly by their own hands. A culprit must not die. A culprit must be among the characters appearing in the story. Purple statements are absolute. However, the culprit alone may lie with purple statements. Okay. So, yes, I want to check purple by person. Oh, this is cool. Okay. Okay. Found that the windows. I, maybe this would be better to do actually by chapter, so I can kind of break it down. Um, so let's do that. Okay, first twilight. Six corpses. Dining hall was locked. So go to unlock with a master key. Okay, so let me write this down. So first twilight was Ava. Hideyoshi, Rudolph, Kyrie, Rosa, and Genji. Okay. Uh, check in the corpses. Now, this is the weird, the, the one, the whole thing about like the death of each parent was confirmed by their children or their child. But then, like, there's Genji. Uh, Genji's the outlier, because... And then I gotta be careful about the wording, too. So Genji, possibly? Um, so... so Ava and Hideyoshi, so that would be... Um, George. Rudolph and Kyrie, that would be Badler. And then Rosa would be... Maria. And there's still Jessica. So Jessica... Okay. Death of each parent was confirmed by their child. And then Dr. Nanjo and I confirmed Genji-sama was dead. Okay, so that that rules that out. Um, doctor or not, no one examining body would reach the wrong conclusion. It looks like all the victims died instantly. Now, there's the whole thing about it looks like... But then in purple, it says all the victims died. <laughs> oh my god, I'm already like, what? 
Okay, the locked room crime scene. After inspecting the interior, we determined all the doors. This, sorry guys, this is probably gonna take me a while. Like, especially if this is the very, very end, right? Like, this might. I don't know how much more is gonna go on after this. I'm just thinking, I'm like, it's gotta be. I feel like it still has to be somebody. It's that whole thing where it's like they're playing dead. Somebody's playing dead. Because it's a locked room. But then there's a the whole thing. Ah. Oh, yeah, what throws me off is the purple things. People could be lying about that, right? Like the whole thing about like, oh my gosh, that's going to really trip me up. So I'm going to have to really be careful with this because people could be using the purple truth to lie. That doesn't mean that it's... So for example, like... Oh my gosh. Um, it's this whole check in the corpses. Um, like Shannon could be lying about the death of each parent was confirmed by their child. Cannon could be lying. Nanjo could be lying. Dr. Nanjo confirmed Genji was dead. Doctor not knowing all the... And Maria could be lying, too, about the, vic the victims dying. So, like, I... So... Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's go to the second toilet. So I have to, like, figure that, like, all of these could be lies. Depending on who it is. All right, the culprit of the first Twilight has definitely killed six people. Okay. And that's just a plain red truth. Um, so that's implying that there might just be the one culprit. So it could have just, it seems like it's just one person. So barring that, like, it's not completely out of the, out of the realm of possibility that somebody could have been alive in that first locked room and then just like snuck out later because there's that whole thing is once they seal up a room uh they don't go back in it so they can't confirm that a body didn't move around so there could be an like uh what's the word people could be working together and somebody could have slipped out so maybe for example um maybe even the first master key um what was that it was the master key here we destroyed Genji's master key. That could be a lie in itself. So there could be a master key floating around. Oh, wait, regarding master keys. One is held by each of the servants. The servants keep the master keys on their own first. So it's impossible for them to be stolen, handed over, or used by any human other than themselves. So that makes me think it's gotta be, it's gotta be a servant uh, who could be behind this. Shannon and Cannon vanish. Forced to acknowledge she was dead. George could be lying. George could be in on it with Shannon. Why do I'm feeling like George and Shannon could be in on it? Because George was one of the ones left alive at the end, so he could have killed people after. But then Nanjo also confirms her death. God damn it, this is really <laughs> this is tricky. From now on, Cannon is treated as having been killed, and his master key is treated as having been destroyed. None of us have an alibi. Okay. Regarding Shannon's death, it was impossible for George to be the murderer. Anyone could have killed her besides George. Okay. Maybe George... Oh, man, oh, man. The thing is, like, how many murderers do we have? This is the tricky thing. Like, Nanjo could be in on this, and all of his things could be taken as untrue. And he could be working with someone. All the servants were together the whole time. All the servants can prove an alibi for all the other servants. Oh man, oh man, this is... I don't know why, like, this seemed like this was gonna be easier, and then once I actually have to deal with all this, the rules, I'm like, oh wow, this is actually pretty difficult. The four cousins and Dr. Nanjo couldn't have killed Godasan and Kumasawa-san. Okay. So at this point, it was just... And then there was that thing about Maria couldn't kill anybody. I wonder if that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I have a feeling like it's going to be a servant. Um, maybe Genji from the beginning. 
Uh, maybe Natsui lied about Genji's, um, his key being destroyed. <sighs> but then there's also the thing about, like, Shannon could be working with somebody and lying about, like, the, um, the children, uh, confirming their parents' deaths. It's one of the four of the culprits. Now this here, Maria Badler, George, and I couldn't have killed Dr. Nancho. No one could kill Dr. Nancho inside the guest house. So that could probably mean that maybe he got brought back in. Maybe he was outside and got killed? I don't know. Oh, Dr. Nancho didn't leave the guest house. But one of them could be lying about that. And then there's Jessica's corpse. She died instantly. There's no way she could live. Who killed her? Now this is tricky. George, Marie, Maria, and I couldn't have killed Jessica because they were all together. George couldn't kill an adult. He could kill a kid, though. Now that, hmm, that makes me think. But then again, has there been any children who have died? God, Jessica, would she be considered a child? I don't think so. Like, what is, in this case, what is an adult? Is that somebody under 18? Because Jessica is 16, I believe. So, he could kill a kid. So may that's making me think maybe George and Shannon are working together. But then it says, like, but George isn't, George wouldn't kill Shannon. So maybe she's not dead. Well, let's go back to Shannon's. I'm thinking that's where I'm kind of leaning towards, is maybe, uh, which one was Shannon? Shannon and Cannon. Especially the whole thing about, like, vanishing. Cannon vanished. I was forced to acknowledge she was dead. I examined her and confirmed her death. Ugh. Now, unless Nanjo was in on it, could be maybe Nanjo, George, and Shannon. Oh my god, this is really hard, guys. <laughs> this is really hard. Now, yeah, I don't know how Nanjo... Like, he must have been killed by one of the cousins. And one of them is just lying about it. Maria couldn't kill anyone. It'd be hilarious if she was actually, like, she was behind all of the murders. Oh, man, oh, man. Uh, let's see. Anyone could have killed her besides George. Ugh. You know, they didn't specify why George couldn't have killed Shannon, other than the fact that they were, like... Oh, excuse me, um, boyfriend... Oh, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> boyfriend, girlfriend. Uh, was there any, like, real reason why they're like, it's impossible? Hmm. Shannon, what about you? She doesn't have many purple truths, does she? Servants were together the whole time. Oh, man, oh, man. Doctor or not, no one examining a body will reach the wrong conclusion. Ugh. Okay, so my thought is either it's George and Shannon, maybe with Nanjo helping as, like, an accomplice. Oh, but then there's the whole thing. Wait, let me go back. God damn it, the rules. Um, characters who are not culprits may not cooperate with a culprit. Um, it's possible for culprits. Okay. Ah, so it has to. So if Nanjo was... If Nanjo was a culprit, or was a cooperator, he would have to kill as well. Damn it! Okay. And that would also mean Shannon would also have to kill. And none of them made it to the end. So it's got to be one of the one of the culprits has to be cooperating with someone. And that, like, the culprit has to make it to the end. So let me write that down. So that leaves us at the end with either George, Adler, um, Maria, right? Or Maria. 
Those are the only three that made it to the end. Okay, so it's got to be one of those three has at least committed one murder. And then an accomplice would also have to murder, right? I'm sorry, guys. This is probably going to take me a while. I really want to try and, like, not refer to the hints, but I might have to. This is this is tricky. This is fun, though. This is really fun. Characters who are not culprits only speak the truth. Characters who are not culprits may not cooperate. We're not culprit. Okay. Culprit must carry out all murders directly by their own hands. A culprit must not die. So that means, that's another thing too, is like they're definitely, obviously there has to be people that they're working with. So it's got to be one of the people in the locked rooms, probably from the beginning. Oh man, okay. It's this whole thing about like checking the parents. That is such a strange statement to me. Uh, what was it? Shannon who said that. But it also makes me think there's got to be... It's got to be a servant has to be part of because there's the whole thing about the master key in order to create a locked room. So I'm thinking it's got to be, there's got to be, it's either George Badler or Maria. And I'm doubting it's Maria. So I'm feeling like it's down to George or Badler. And then they have to be working with a servant. Um, so that makes, and then Cannon disappears, quote unquote disappears. That could also be a thing. Could Cannon be considered a culprit if he's disappeared from the game? Um... So I'm going to put George, Badler, and Maria working potentially with Shannon. For some reason, I don't think Genji or Kumasawa would be part of it. So that makes me think either Shannon... I'll put Cannon with an asterisk. Um, and then Genji. Now, like I said, my thought is... Now the thing is, like, how many how many people do we have murdering? We could have two, we could have three, we could have... That's what's... Like, there's no limit to how many people it could be part of the thing. So, like I said, George and Shannon. That's the two that I'm, like, really thinking about, potentially. But then we've also got people potentially in the first or the second room. Locked room. Um, so you've got all of the... All of these people... All those people. And then you've got the second Twilight. Could be Kraus and Natsui. But this is why I'm thinking like it's... I'm thinking like if it's gonna be... I'll also put the parents. Um, so I'll put... And then I'm also thinking like, well, it's not gonna be Jessica most likely. Because <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. So it makes me think of Kyrie... Rudolph, Ava, Hideyoshi. Because their kids are still alive by the end. So, those are my people that I have. So I'm crossing off Maria, because she can't kill an adult, apparently. That could be a lie, but that would be very difficult to do. Especially if they're killed by their own hands, right? Like, so it makes me think it's got to be an, like an adult, at least, or someone strong. So my people that I have as potential is George... Badler, Shannon, Cannon, Genji, Kyrie, Rudolph, Ava, and Hideyoshi. Now, if we're going to connect, can we say George, Shannon, potentially Ava, and Hideyoshi? Or can we say maybe Badler could be working with Shannon, or Genji, or Cannon, and then working with his parents as well? But you need a, you, that's the problem, you need a key. This is where it gets tricky. Oh, man, oh, man. Okay, I think I'm going to... I think I will get a hint. At least one. See if that helps. Narrow things down. Oh, question mark, question mark. I'm going to try not to, like, ask for all of the hints, but, like, I feel like I've, I've narrowed it down to... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've narrowed it down to about nine people. That's not much, I know. あがき真実並みに重要な発言だってことは分かってるんだ。だが犯人の嘘が混じってる。パリが混じってるかもしれないパンをそのまま丸飲みにしてるバカはいないわ。さ、a little bit of a reference to Higurashi, it's got to be,
Not the whole thing. Like, yeah, you have to discount some of their truths or some of the purple statements. <laughs> I mean, that's. It's sort of a hint, but like, I already knew that, that I can't just. Take everything at face value. Alright, turn the chessboard over. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Okay. I mean, I feel like I did sort of an okay job at ruling out a lot of people, but I'll try it again. なるほど。犯人を探すのではなく、まずは絶対に犯人でない人物を探すというわけか。基本であるな。Okay, well, let's go back then and let's really make sure that we rule people out. I feel, so like I said, I feel like I can cross off, um, I feel like I can cross off Natsui and, and Kraus, because, I don't know, to me, the people at the end, George, Badler, like, I feel like it's people who would have a vested interest to want to work with each other, so that's why I'm thinking it's people with, like, more of a close relationship, now that might not necessarily be true, um, but, like, so, considering that the only people at the end are George, Badler, and Maria, and I'm guessing that Maria is not the murderer, we can cross Rosa off. So, Rosa and Maria, I'm gonna take them as out. Um, and I'm not using any specific statements for that, I'm just kind of going with, like, I don't know. Um, so, and then, alright, so let's cross off, so let's see, so I'm gonna cross off Kraus. Not so, so if that's the case, then everything, if I'm assuming that they are not the culprits, that everything they say is true. So that means Natsui's statement about the uh, Genji's key being destroyed, I'm saying that is true. Uh, Rosa. Maria. So let's look at their things. Nobody was hiding. So nobody's hiding in the room. Now, somebody could still make... A locked room from the outside. So the people that would have had a key would be Shannon, Hannon, uh, Kumasawa, and Goda. So they could potentially be culprits. If we don't have a lock from the inside situation. Now, a person in the locked room could have used Genji's key to lock the room, play dead, and then have like somebody establish an alibi for them by saying they're dead when they're not necessarily dead. Now, who else do I feel like I can kind of rule out? I feel like I want to rule out Goda and Kumasawa. Now, this one's a little bit tricky, though, because all of the servants here have an alibi, so I forgot about this. So this... Hmm. And there was nobody in, it was literally just Natsui and Kraus. So nobody in that room would have a locked key to create like a fake locked room situation. So like, unless all the servants are lying. And by the fact that they're lying, that makes them all a culprit. Oh man, this just gets trickier. Oh wait, no, it was, um, no, it wasn't this one. Sorry, it was the, it was the one after this where they all said they had an alibi, right? No, I think they- I think the second one, they did have an alibi. Yeah, the second Twilight, all the servants were together the whole time. 
Now, Shannon does say she unlocked the door. Now, who's to say, like, the room wasn't unlocked in the first place and she was pretending to unlock the door? Ugh, I feel like Shannon is a potential. I feel like she seems pretty suspicious. All the servants can provide an alibi for all of the other servants. Ugh. Ugh. <sighs> Hmm. Mm hmm. 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 This, yeah, the second one, not a lot happens, but it makes it very difficult for me. It's when I arrived. I recommend he try unlocking the door just in case. Three of us couldn't have killed Jessica. Now, it's also this thing. George couldn't kill an adult. He could kill a kid. Like, what a weird statement. But then also saying that the three of them couldn't have killed Jessica. Oh, my goodness. The more I think about it, the more, it's like I said, the more my head hurts. So, in that case, if I'm, if I'm saying that, let me see. So, if I'm saying that George, Badler, Fannin... Uh, so let me look at their statements a little bit more, because I could take everything that they say as not true. Okay, so by the fifth and sixth twilight, no master keys exist anymore except the two keys on the two people who lie dead. Uh, okay. God damn it. Let me check the red truths here. The culprit of the first twilight has definitely killed six people. Okay. So that makes me think it's got to be somebody who is inside the locked room from the first one has to be the culprit. So, Ava Hideyoshi, Rudolph Curie, or Genji. So I'm, and then they're working with someone, so I'm thinking either Ava, Hideyoshi, George, and maybe Shannon working together, or because Shannon would need the key. Or Badler, Rudolph, Curie, maybe Shannon. But, no, they destroyed, ugh, they destroyed Genji's key. I was like, maybe they could have kept Genji's key and keep using it to create locked rooms, but they can't do that. Huh. <laughs> Do we have any more, like, red truths? Okay, Cannon is treating as having been killed, so I guess I can cross Cannon off, maybe? But he could have been a- he could have been a, um... No! Culprits can't be killed, so it's not Cannon. Okay, Cannon can't be. So, one, two, three... I've only rolled out five people, and even then, other than canon, I can't really say that I've, um... Because, like, all the bodies... Because somebody could be lying. All of those bodies, because they say culprits can't be killed. I can't confirm that really any of those bodies are, like, truly... dead, because they say a culprit cannot be killed. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm gonna ask for another hint. I'm so lame, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not the master detective I thought I was. It's funny, I literally was just talking about that, so damn it, I kind of wasted a hint there. Um, so they're talking about that. ほう、それは分かりやすい。ほとんどの人物は殺された。それらの人物の紫は全て信用できると言うわけか。ところが、そう簡単な話じゃない。俺とお前のゲームでも。Right, exactly. 
That's unless Nanjo's in on it, but... Damn it, it's this again where culprits can't be killed, or culprits... Um, people who aren't culprits can't work with other culprits, and culprits are um, somebody that has actually murdered somebody. Right? Exactly. <sighs> It would be nice if maybe like after after a hint was given, then we're given more like maybe they could confirm things in red. Like this is an absolute truth. Alright. Alright, so I gotta go back and really... So first we're talking about people who can't possibly be um, the culprits. And now we have to look at people that we can say for absolute sure are dead. Uh, no, we want to go by chapter. Okay. Maybe I'll work backwards. Now, as for people who are for sure dead, I will say, I'm gonna say Jessica, even without, like, Nanjo. I'm gonna say Jessica's dead. Cannon, dead. And what about Nanjo? When Battler said, look at this, simply put, this is proof, did he actually, like, what was the proof? I don't want to have to read the whole story again, but, like, what proof did Battler have? Was it, like, a locked... a locked door that proves that he would... he couldn't have left? Okay, I kind of skipped over the 5th and 6th Twilight, didn't I? I didn't really look too much into that. There's this whole thing. Now, is that necessarily true? The culprit... Then again... <sighs> hmm. The cousins have no blood on them. The four cousins and Dr. Nanjo couldn't have killed Goda and Kumasawa. So this makes me think it's got to be someone from towards the beginning, right? Like, maybe somebody from one of the first two locked rooms. But, like, I'm pretty sure, like I said, Kraus and Natsui wouldn't do this. Mmm. I don't, I don't want to immediately go to another hint. I really don't. I want to, like, try and figure things out for myself. Do I want to reread the whole story? Okay, at least I like I like the way that they're doing this though. Now hopefully I can oh I was like I, I wanted to see the I, I don't want to actually see all this. I just wanted to see if there's like a log of it. Darn it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, previous chapter? Alright. I, I can probably skip ahead on this one, you guys. I'm just gonna, like, really... Because they say the whole thing about, like, you can treat non-spoken um, stuff as factual, right? So I need to actually read that again to see if there's anything I may have missed.
Okay, so I've reread through things and uh, I'm still confused about the Nanjo one. Like, the fact that George and Badler both said, like, there's no way that Nanjo could be killed inside the guest house or, like, there's no proof that he left the guest house. But they didn't give any specifications about why that's true. Um, but one that caught me, that made me be like, wait, what, was this one here, Chapter 2? about the culprits of the first twilight where it says the culprit of the first twilight has definitely killed six people my thing was like wait a minute why is this in the second twilight and not the first twilight so you gotta think so there's two people who were killed um on the second twilight so if by the second twilight they've killed six people so that's four people that they would have killed on the first twilight but that's the weird thing is like usually on the first twilight a certain number of people are killed so I could just be, like, overthinking this, but I'm just thinking so. So, if you leave it that way, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six people were found dead on the first Twilight, but if on the first Twilight only four people were killed, that changes things a little bit, right? And I'm still thinking, like, it's gotta be, gotta be, like, family members who are connected possibly with a servant working with them as well and then george said that he couldn't possibly kill shannon and i feel like i want to believe that but the maria thing about like he like how george could kill a kid i'm still wondering what a kid means like if that's anybody under a certain age that's what throws me off i think i'm gonna uh, i have an idea i have like i said two possible groups of people i think it could be i will get one more hint and then I will just buck up and I will, like, make my choice. So I want to know with you guys, um, when you did this, did you, uh, did you, were you able to solve it? Uh, and if so, were you able to solve it without any hints? Or did you need hints to do it? Or were you just, like, were you wrong on it? And what were your thoughts about who it was? Hopefully I can save, too. Because I wonder what happens, like, if I pick the wrong people. Do I lose and then Burn Castle wins? The narration. Narrative text outside the dialogue. Oh, I just reread through the story and I'm like, I was I was looking for that, but I couldn't find anything out of place. Uh, I might have to read breathe through it again. Okay, so that is the clue to it, is it's it's within the non-dialogue. Confirmed by the narration. Okay. Alright, I'll have to reread through it. Okay. Alright. Oh, I, I literally just did that, but okay, let's do it again. Let's really pay attention and we'll cross people off. Okay. <laughs> This'll be... I'm gonna cut this down so that you guys, like, unless something happens while I'm reading, but I'm like, this might seem like a short episode, but believe me, I've been going on doing this for a while now. <laughs> All right, we'll be very careful. So I went through and I'm just like, there's not as much narration or like non-dialogue as I was hoping there would be. Um, but going through it again, another thing that caught my eye is I was, I kept talking about that whole thing about Maria saying that George could kill a child and I was fixated on that, but I didn't think about the fact, like, he can't kill an adult. And I'm like, well, if that's the case, then he's not a- he wouldn't be a very good murderer, because most of the people... Um, I mean, you could say maybe that Jessica would be considered a child. Uh, Shannon, she's technically older than 16, but if he believes she's 16, I guess maybe she'd be considered a child. But George also can't kill Shannon. Uh, the only other child really would be Jessica and Maria, and Maria's still alive at the end. But it's a whole thing about, like, well, he can't kill an adult. So I'm like, well, that's a lot of people that that, um, you know, if he's working with and with someone, then, uh, 
Unless that person's killing everybody, George isn't really a very good culprit. So, by process of elimination in that case, I was like, I've been saying it's between the two, so I'm thinking it might be Adler, Kyrie, Rudolph, and possibly Shannon, because he would need the key. And then maybe, um, except so Shannon would have to be, she would have to kill someone as well in order to be a culprit, wouldn't she? That's what's throwing me off, is like they need to have access to the master keys for the locked door unless they created the um so i mean shannon could have maybe killed someone let me go to hers again because i don't want to just keep going for hints i've been i want to make my choice and see if i'm right or wrong but then there's also the thing about the um alibi They can lie even before committing murder as well. Characters who are not culprits only speak the truth. May not cooperate with a culprit. A culprit must not die. Ah. Uh, so Shannon could still be alive. Ah. Uh, am I able to save before I like... Oh, I can't save. I just have to go with it. Alright guys, well. I'm gonna make my... Gonna make my choice here. I'm going to... I can pick as many people as I want. How do I select? Okay. Do I have a limit? Everybody was all in on it together. Oh, wow. So there's no... There's literally, like, no limit to how many people I can say. All right. So let's say... Badler. Kyrie. Rudolph. Shannon. Or maybe Cannon? Except Cannon was confirmed as being dead. And culprits can't die. So Shannon could be... Faking her death, too. Okay, we're gonna go with Shannon. Okay, let's hope this is right. Go! Did I get it? バトラミオ第七の番の何条についてはトガキではっきりと殺されたと記されているぞ俺も見つけたぜ第八の番のジェシカについてトガキではっきりと無残な死体だったと記しているということはつまりなんじょう先生とジェシカこの二人は確実に死んでいるということはなっけんなのはそしてそれはなんじょうとジェシカが犯人ではないことを示しているというわけだ the pair gave each other a high five. But we're still back on talking about the bodies? I'm like, I've said who I think the culprits are. Let's get into that. Finally, they'd found their first big clue. A safe slice on the roll with a needle in it. They discovered some purple statements they could trust. なんじょう先生が犯人でないことが確定なら第一の番の彼の紫発言である私でなくとも誰も検視を誤らないが大きな意味を持ってくるつまり誰であっても検視は誤らないということ。Oh no, wait a minute. Does that just um does that go against what I thought about the whole thing about the first twilight? 犯人でないことが確定したこの2人。Okay. But Jessica didn't confirm. Boom, boom. Wait a minute. Hold on, I might be onto something because Nanjo said that he confirmed Genji's death. So Genji for sure died. And Jessica didn't check any of the bodies because her parents didn't die. Boom. All right. I might be actually getting somewhere with this. Oh man, this is like kind of nerve-wracking because they're not just telling me straight up either whether I'm right or wrong. They're just, they're gonna draw this out, aren't they? <laughs> okay. Oh man, now I wish I could go back. Oh no, now I want to go back and like, but I'm, I'm in on, like I've, I've made my choices, so I've just got to go with it. 
Wait, okay, wait, so that... Oh, though, is that giving me a clue that I was wrong? Okay, so in that case, they are giving me another chance here. So they're just gonna let me do this over and over again until... Oh, so that was probably another hint, wasn't it? Okay, they are. So every time I get it wrong, they're gonna give me another hint. Okay, I don't want to be given all the hints until the game is like... Burnkessel's like, well, you're dumb. Let me just spell it out for you. Okay, so... The whole thing about uh, Nanjo and Jessica, so everything that they say. So my thing could still be correct. Let's look again at their statements. Okay. Okay, so George cannot be the murderer. So George, so that's what I thought. I had a feeling George wasn't. So Goda and Kumasawa are both dead. All right, let's put those on the list. So we got Genji, right? Uh, because Nanjo. That will be important. This will be important. Doctor or not, no one examining body will reach the wrong conclusion. Now, that also could go the other way. So, the whole thing about, like, inspecting their parents' bodies, if they know that the parents are, like, not actually dead, they won't reach the wrong conclusion. But Badler said... Oh, that was the second Twilight. Okay. The Dr. Nanjo died instantly. Okay. So, Genji. Oh, that except that wasn't a purple. I thought that Nanjo had the statements. Oh, that was canon. So I can't for sure say Genji's dead. Hmm. But no one examining the body will reach the wrong conclusion. So... So Nanjo confirmed... Okay, so we'll say Genji. So Genji, Jessica, Nanjo, for sure dead. I'm gonna put Cannon on the list also. Uh, is there anybody else? Okay, so Jessica also confirmed Gota, Kumasawa, dead. That means that they can't be responsible for any of the murders. And then also, Maria, Badler, George, and I couldn't have killed Dr. Nanjo. So, at least in this case, they would have to have been killed by somebody else. Okay. Let's check Nanjo's things again. Okay, oh, also, um, we have Natsui and uh, Kraus. Okay, so there we go. Examined her and confirmed her death. Oh, who was that? Oh, that was Shannon. So Shannon, oh, Shannon's dead. Oh, so she can't be... She can't be uh, working together with anyone because she's confirmed dead. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine people dead. So who do we have as alive? Or not confirmed dead, I guess I should say. So Badler, Maria, George. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Now, I'm going to put certain ones with an asterisk. Asterisk for Ava. Asterisk for Hideyoshi. Um, asterisk for Rosa, I guess. Um, Rudolph. Asterisk. Kyrie. Asterisk. Because we only have three people that we can for sure say are absolutely alive. Now, the thing about this, about the alive people, or the not confirmed dead, is none of the other people here are servants. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me see something. Um, the chapter. Let me just check again. 
about Cannon. It's saying he's treated. He's treated as having been killed. Could that be a weird... Could Cannon actually maybe be, perhaps? Question mark? Maybe? Maybe he is alive? I know we know the, the nature of Shannon and Cannon. If Shannon dies... Doesn't necessarily mean Cannon might die too. Like, yes, they're different personas. So maybe Cannon, actually. The wording might on this. So that's making me think, especially if you want people working together. And it's also treated the master key as having been destroyed. But at that point, they don't need the master key anymore, do they? So maybe. I'm going to stick with the Badler Rudolph Curie thing. But maybe Cannon as well. Because I'm thinking, like, you want people who are working together. Obviously, family, close family would work together, but you would still need the keys to be able to make a locked room scenario. So let's go with Cannon, and we'll go with that. Are we right? Damn it! I'm still wrong! I'm still wrong! I, this, is, this is bad. この Okay. I've already got these. Ah。Well, I was thinking about the appear to, or if we're gonna treat him as dead shit. All right, well, we're gonna cross Cannon off then, and we're gonna move him over to the dead side. Shit, alright. I mean, I guess Ken Genji was he was confirmed by it was it was canon, not Nanjo statement, so he hasn't really been confirmed as dead, so because hmm. I have nine people on my list now, but they're saying eight because they didn't say Genji. Oh, okay. Ah, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. With the purple statements, anyone who's not the culprit, you can trust their purple statements. Ah, right. I forgot about that rule. Okay. Although I think I've got it now. I think if we remove cannon, I feel like I'm I'm going to I'm putting too many people in it. Uh, but let's just because I don't want to have to fail again. This isn't getting embarrassing. I'm sure you guys probably got this way before I did. So you did destroy Genji's master key. Um, who am I doing? Uh, Goda. Okay. So her room was locked. Before Twilight, nobody has an alibi. So you destroyed the master key Shannon had. Now this here about saying lying there covered in blood, but not confirmed dead. So canon. So now you can say Genji is dead. So I had him on the list, but now we can say for sure. All the servants can provide alibi. So servants might not. So the servants are not involved in this. Damn it. Okay. All the servants were involved the whole time. But this no. No! Ah, this is where it's gonna get me, though. The death of each parent was confirmed by their old child, so that... That puts me back to square one. Because that... you have to take that as true. I don't know what to do at this point. Maria killed everybody. I don't know. 
The three of us couldn't have killed Jessica. George couldn't kill Andal. Ugh. Damn it. Okay, fuck. I'm still gonna go with... Now I'm gonna say Badler, Kyrie, and Rudolph. No servants involved. Hey, his face looks different. We got it. We got it. It took me a very long time. Holy cow. It took me so long. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. Well, that was really fun. That went exactly like I was hoping it was going to go when uh, Burnkestel was talking about the idea of like, I'm going to create like a mystery game for you. And it seemed very straightforward. I'm like, oh, please let it be like with the riddles and stuff or like Higurashi with the fragments. And I've got to put the pieces together. And that was so well done. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a dummy. It took it took me probably more time than most people to, to eventually get to the correct answer. But I got there. Uh, so while this may seem like a short episode, uh, I'm probably going to be cutting out a lot of just me rereading through the story a, a couple of times. Uh, so I want to know what you guys, uh, you know, when you first read through this, how long did it take you to figure it out? Were you able to figure it out first go without any hints? I want to know how bad I am in comparison to you guys. And if this is your first time reading through this chapter along with me, did you figure out who the culprits were before I did? Did you, were you still not sure right up until the very end? I want to know down in the comments below, but overall this was so much fun. I'm just loving this chapter, just in like it letting me be able to actually kind of interact with it a little bit more. And that was awesome. This like really makes me want to try and find more games that do that kind of thing where you actually have to put the pieces together. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed playing through this. Stay tuned for part 92 uh, when I guess we will get to see maybe the details of how Kyrie, Rudolph, and Badler pulled off this game. And uh, I'm just really excited about it getting back into kind of like a standard like murder mystery. So anyway, thank you for watching and stay tuned next week for more. Until then, bye guys. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons. Kiori Makoto, SM, Revealing Storm, Tequila Mockingbird, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gaziff, Icognito, Jared Fan, Joel Ustman, and Zoran Ether.